Hello, welcome to my late 2020 PC build video. In this video I will be building a uh, gaming computer. However, we weren't able to get a hold of a good GPU, so that will have to be changed later. Hello, so in this build we have the Ryzen 5 3600, which is one of the best uh, budget CPUs you can get nowadays. There is one generation newer, but it is a bit more expensive. We have the uh, Samsung 970 EVO, one terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD, which is a uh, really good SSD. Plenty of storage and plenty fast. The RAM, we have a two stick, 16 gigabytes total, eight gigabytes per channel, DDR4-3600. High RAM speeds tend to be better for AMD Ryzen processors due to their Infinity fabric. I don't know if that is the case on the next generation of the CPUs, but for this uh, generation that is the case. For the motherboard we have an ASRock A520M AC. I would not recommend this if you're planning on overclocking, but this is a good budget option and has a Wi-Fi and of course it's compatible with the third generation Ryzen which is what that is. For the power supply, we have a Superflower Leadex 3 Gold. This is uh, 650 watts, which is enough for an RTX 3070 right now. So if you want to get a 3080, you're gonna want a 750 or 850 watt power supply. Gold is, I recommend it, especially if you're in a warm climate or if you want a silent PC because these power supplies offer many cooling options. There's three modes, just delays how warm it gets before it turns on the fan. With lower efficiency power supply, there's more heat, so therefore it needs to ramp the fan up higher. If you're using 200 watts at 90% efficiency, you're going to be dissipating 20 watts of heat, whereas with an 80% efficiency, which is what the lower ratings are, you'll probably be dissipating 40 watts of heat. And at a higher load, double that. So, it's a lot more heat that the fans need to blow out. Lastly, and least impressively, since we couldn't get a hold of the new GPUs, we decided to temporarily use a cheap one. This got from a friend. It'll do for now. GTX 1052 GB. I would not recommend this for modern titles. It'll run Minecraft great, but if you want Cyberpunk to run on this, uh, expect it to min, min setting 720p, 30 frames per second. Montec case, it's a glass eye panel, has rainbow fans. Not a bad budget case. So here we have the motherboard. Uh, screw for the M.2 standoff. IO shield. Antennas for the Wi-Fi. And a SATA cable. Here we have the motherboard itself. So this Ryzen processor comes with its own uh, stealth cooler, which is the smallest one. Which has the advantage of making so you have to spend additional money on the cooler. So here's the CPU. I'm going to take that out of its case. The pins are on the CPU, so you have to be very careful. There is a little thing there. That lines up with this symbol there. But first, you need to unhook this. If it's in the right spot, it'll slide in. And that just slid, slid in with no resistance. Get that. A lot more resistant now. And it's in. So here's the RAM. The RAM DDR4 is faster and cheaper than the uh, last time I did a build. The last one used 2400 megahertz, this is 3600. 16 is necessary for some games to run, so I definitely recommend getting a kit. This was only $69, I think. Pretty good. This motherboard is slightly more limiting because it only has two slots here. I give it a nice click there. You need to be aware of which channels are ideal when you aren't using all four. 
You also need to be aware of the RAM speeds your CPU is capable of um, working with and the chipset, all that stuff. The advantage of doing the RAM before the CPU cooler is some CPU coolers are huge and cover the RAM. So always be aware of that when doing a build. And click. So next I'll be doing the NVMe SSD. And there you go. Nice and small. So what we need to do is this will be going here. It appears that that standoff right there is at the proper distance. This little one right here. Get a screwdriver with an appropriately sized bit. This one uh, fits in well there, so. It goes in at an angle, and it's keyed. Uh, as you can see, this has one key, one key, and it slots into the one key there. If you have a motherboard with two keys there, that's a sign that that's uh, SATA rather than NVMe. Next we have the cooler for the CPU, it comes with thermal paste pre-applied, don't mess with that until you're ready. So it's going to go get screwed in right here. So these are placeholders for the CPU uh, cooler and underneath the end motherboard you can see the big plate that it screws onto. You don't want to misalign that. So get a, an appropriately sized Phillips head screwdriver, thicker than the old one and unscrew them. So now it's time to put the cooler on. You can't align it so that it's facing, the AMD is facing up, because this is towards the back, and this is wider this way than it is this way, so you have the choice between here and here. So I'm going to go with there. You wanna start all of the screws into their slot the threads. You'll end up screwing it in, but actually you're not. Like, after getting those three in, the last one doesn't want to go in, so you have to press down. Next part, it's hard to do it perfectly, but you want to go in a cross what method to apply even pressure. Just starting to bottom out now. So just gently get all of them to that level and then do them all reasonably tight. The CPU cooler is applied and looks good to me. Lastly, we can plug it in. So you have these pieces of plastic right here that tell you exactly which orientation to push it, push it into the hole with. And then you can try to organize that wire in a reasonable way. Now that we have all of the major small components mounted onto the motherboard, the next step is to take care of the case. This case right here recommends that you put the case on its side before removing the glass panel. Do not remove the nice plastic protective thing until you're done, because fingerprints are a pain. So I have the, uh, I have the glass front, the glass side panel and the back side panel removed. The case is very light um, with that with them removed. So this motherboard is a micro ATX motherboard. Came pre-configured with them in the ATX position. So I need to remove them and put them in the micro ATX position and get and also get some from the accessory bag and that was on the back. Okay, next we will attach the I.O. shield. You can line it up with uh, the motherboard itself so you can get an idea of the orientation it should be in. Put it in the side. Once it has a nice click, it should be done. Okay, it is time to get the motherboard in. It's got to make sure we align the standoffs and then slide it this way so that the I.O. ports line up with the I.O. shield. Now 
The IO shield does push a little this way, because if you look there are like metal pieces that go up a bit. So when you, you're gonna have to put a gentle amount of force to get it in. So next we have to screw it in. You can test if a screw fits in by getting the screw and the stand, an extra standoff, screwing it in and that's pretty scary to me. Don't tighten, uh, except for like maybe a pivot screw right there, don't tighten them all until you get them all in because you need to be able to move it to get them in when they're being pressed against the I.O. panel. So next we have the power supply, so standard stuff, manual, cables and stuff, like the one you plug into the wall. This is a fully modular one, so each cable is individually connectable, which is so much nicer for cable management. So this provides a good 650 watts, uh, all of which basically is available at 12 volts. CPU connector, GPU connector, motherboard connector, and other peripherals. Here's the part that's visible from the outside of the case, the on off switch, and the fan modes. There's a nice little removable filter that just slides in. So therefore, the fan will be pulling in from there and blowing this way. If you flip it up, it'll be trying to blow through this and that'd be really bad. We can just use the screws that it came with to screw it on. So next let's wire up the motherboard. So there's this cable from the container, it has this end which has two, that goes in over there. And the other end goes into the motherboard, it can be a bit of a pain to get into the motherboard, but we'll get there. That's in right there. So right here is the clip that matches with this. So it needs to be angled like that. And then a firm wiggle in. There's one called CPU. It, it's meant for an eight pin, but it should work with a four pin. So this appears to be the side that goes into the power supply. You see how it's keyed? And then this appears to be the side that goes into the motherboard. As you can see it has two because it could be a four pin. And this is a four pin so this is important. Okay, it clicked in there. A little ugly but kind of hard to get around because fan's there and you can't move it. There we go. So we will be now adding that line up the highest matching PCIe uh, X16 slot attached by metal. Make sure this is in the out position. You need the correct screws, 1050, which as I recommended earlier, upgrade it when you can, or if you can, just don't start with this if you're planning on doing any serious gaming. So yeah, press that in. And now that's snapped in right there. Looks good to me. Here is the VGA cable from the power supply. This side goes into the power supply with the four, and then this one with three plus one, six plus two. This goes in here. This is a low power GPU, only 75 watts, I think. Um, so you don't need this extra little bit. If you really want a perfectly managed cable, I know that places sell a 
thing that goes along here. This cable also has two ends. Don't need it in this case, though. So. These cables with two at the end are for modern GPUs that require a lot more power. GA1. Next we have some cables that need to be plugged into the motherboard from the case. We have the reset button, power switch, the LED for the hard drive activity or solid state activity. We also have the USB header. It appears that this one will allow you to plug into a USB 2 header if you don't have USB 3. But we have USB 3 header, so we're going to use that. And this ribbon cable contains USB 2 and uh, audio. I've improved the cable management uh, compared to doing it through there because it's a micro ATX case. It works better just line it up that way and I attach it there. That stuff goes in there. This is not ideal, but what am I gonna do? Okay, so it's plugged into my un uninterruptible power supply and the GPU is connected to my monitor. Turn on the power supply. Nothing blew up, and it's not gonna succeed. If it just gets into BIOS and doesn't find a boot device, that's a success. That's a success. It has realized that there are no boot devices, and it is time to install Windows. Now in the BIOS, UEFI, as you can see the memory set to that 2666 speed that's way too slow it should be 3600 so you gotta manually select that I've had to do that on other computers as well save and exit so I got the side panel on and it's looking good next step drivers so I went to the N NVIDIA site and got it for my GPU. So now we are installing the driver and GeForce Experience, which I, I'd i personally recommend installing this as soon as possible, because this is like a, four, this is a 4K display, and it's running at a terrible resolution right now. As you can see, the drivers are installed and GeForce Experience is working well. If you look on the left, you can see the temperatures. It gets pretty hot with the default stock cooler. If you are ever having issues where you are CPU bound, or if you want to potentially extend the lifespan of your CPU, I would recommend spending a reasonable amount of money on a budget air cooler. Liquid cooling is not much better performing, uh, or sometimes worse. As you can see, Minecraft is working great. Uh, with the frames per second unlimited at 4K windowed, it's getting over 200 frames per second with the default settings. So that's pretty good. But as I said, this GPU is not recommended for more intensive titles. So you can get an RTX 3060 Ti, 3070, 3080, or if you're really rich, 3090. There are also the AMD offerings that are also pretty good. They're just not as good at ray tracing. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.